Health inspectors of Reddit. What's the worst thing you've ever found when inspecting a restaurant shop? I once finished up a foodborne illness investigation, not finding much that could have caused the illness, and left. I parked my car on the other side of the street in full view of the restaurant I was just at. I watched the dishwasher come out the back door, light a cigarette, smoke for a minute, then hunch over and freaking puke all over the grass. Then he took another drag and went back inside. I have mild emetophobia so I got a bit of a cold sweat, then ran across the street and basically dragged his butt outside. I've got a lot of stories, but that was the worst for me. Was a health inspector long ago, was at a golden corral, going through the kitchen area. As I was squatting down to check a dishwasher, my foot broke through the tile floor and into a sewer pipe that ran underneath. Cockroaches come boiling out of the hole. Turns out the entire floor was rotten from a water leak in the sewer pipe. Best worst part, the general manager tried to fight me when I told them they had to close down until they fix the open hole into a pipe full of cockroaches and waste. The general manager tried to fight me when I told them they had to close down. I just picture your foot stuck in the hole still with roaches pouring out and the manager coming up to you with Irish fighting stance. In the mid 80s I managed a pizza delivery store and the health inspector came by kind of late and asked me to step outside. He started by apologizing but it was his job to follow up when they have a specific complaint concerning food safety but this one was odd. He proceeded to tell me a customer complained that while they were in the store two male workers had sex on the counter and didn't even wash their hands. I very dryly responded that couldn't have happened as we always wash our hands after having sex on the cutting table. With a small grin he said that's what he thought and he appreciated our efforts. He was our inspector for several years after that. 14 inch border of mold dirt scum all the way around the edge of the restaurant. Boxes that had 5 year old shipping labels blocking the path to the mops mop buckets mop sink. No sanitizer buckets. No sanitizer cloths. No sanitizer. Mold and the fans blowing over open food in the cooler. Didn't bother finishing the inspection. Just shut them down. Late to the party but I used to work on my own as a baker in a supermarket and the cleaners would come in at 10pm at night when the last worker left and he would be finished by 2am when I arrived. Well one day I was half an hour early and I walked up to my department and the cleaner was mopping the prep tables and the equipment with the same water he had used to clean the floor. I wish I was joking. To use the mop on the tables to begin with is stupid but using he same water as well? Insane. I told his boss when he came in because I simply had to and his face was a picture. He really didn't believe me until I got him to have a look on CCTV. Oh I forgot. He wasn't supposed to even touch the machinery. That was my job. So he was dirtying my already clean equipment. Did pest control for 10 years and seen some crap. I happened to get picked to take care of roaches and mice at a very heavily populated Somali business type area. It span about two city blocks and housed restaurants and shops. It was basically a four wall warehouse partitioned off into sections inside. The horrors of roaches and mice in these restaurants was unlike anything I have seen. Literally both creatures walking over your feet, over the food, on the counters, in and out of the coolers, stoves, food storage bins, you name it. We eventually gave up rather quickly since the restaurant owners didn't really care and didn't help us out any by sealing foods and cleaning and whatnot. I had asked the owner of the building, the man who initially called us. Why haven't they been shut down by the city and he said, because no white people come here so no one cares. Never again will I do pest control. Not an inspector, but my so told me about what happened at a popular seafood restaurant in my town. A guy working the fry station had a magnetic kitchen timer above the fryer stuck to the hood vent above. One day, the timer fell into the hot grease. They managed to fish out the main plastic part, but the batteries were nowhere to be found. It was determined that the batteries must have disintegrated into the grease. Being a seafood restaurant in the south, half the menu is fried. The owner is too much of a skinflint to stop serving fried food and change out the grease during dinner rush. So whoever ate catfish that night had it fried in a tangy alkaline grease. Health inspector here. Here are my top 3. Comma an old liquor store, which had once been the front unit of a housing duplex, had now coveted into full service deli, sandwiches, fried chicken, etc. Without plan review, 
so they were severely lacking in all the proper space and equipment. Observed were, rat infestation, droppings everywhere in the place, mountains of old cast off equipment in the back, giving the rats a home, meat defrosting on the hood of an inoperable car on the side alley, back unit of duplex, now converted to food storage had unfinished wooden boards on the floor, which were now soft and rotting from soaking up years of meat juice and everything else. Comma while inspecting a Chinese buffet, I noted to the employees that there were tubs of frozen fried shrimp stacked on top of one another without covers, so they needed to discard the top layers of the food and put on the tub lids. As they scrambled to do so, they knocked over the tower of shrimp, spilling it everywhere. As I was standing there, they hurriedly started scooping the shrimp off the floor and back into the tubs. I'm standing right here you guys. Comma a guy ordered commercial sausage making equipment delivered to his private home. Manufacturer got suspicious and tipped off the health department. Turns out the guy would go hunting all sorts of exotic game meat without permits. Process them into sausages in his rat infested garage. Droppings the size of jelly beans. And was selling them to the public. Don't buy food from home cooks folks. High and tight place in a popular tourist area. Go downstairs to the kitchen and open up their freezer. On the top shelf of the freezer, they are storing loose beef, pork, and chicken in three separate piles. The meats are not in any containers. They are all sitting on a large piece of cardboard the restaurant had placed on the bottom of the shelf. We poke the cardboard and our finger goes right through it. The juices from the three meats had turned the cardboard into pulp. We then notice it dripping from the combined sludge of chicken, pork, and beef blood. From the looks of the cardboard, it had been dripping for a while. We look to the shelf below to see the results of the drip. Underneath the meats, in the shelf second from the top, the restaurant was storing three buckets of ice cream. Without lids. Directly under the meat drip, we look inside the ice cream containers and see congealed. Partially frozen, cardboard lay straw meat drippings, pooled in the center of each tub of ice cream. None of the ice creams were more than halfway full. We ask the kitchen manager how long they've been storing their items like this. He doesn't remember. At least a few months. My theory is, because the place was a, a nice restaurant and b, an ethnic restaurant, patrons were less likely to complain about odd flavors. For example, instead of complaining about blood in the ice cream, wondering out loud if that taste is star anise. That's one of the few inspections that made me feel physically sick. Place still got an A because the restaurant grade system in my city is about as effective as tsar. A tuna canning plant in Los Angeles was off of Terminal Island. The processing plant owned the entire island a few miles offshore. Needless to say, had to take a boat to the plant to look at some machinery they needed repaired. We get to the plant and there are dozens of cats. Inside the plant. Outside the plant. Warehouse. Etc. Cats everywhere. Nobody said anything. They were even in the office building. After a few trips, I finally asked. One guy said in a joke. It's either rats or cats. We don't have a rat problem here. I worked grocery in Manhattan. Our exterminator brought us a cat and we took the points for having a pet versus having bugs and rodents. The only mouse I ever saw there was in the process of being eaten by the cat. I helped my dad run his restaurant for a good 5 years. And my dad was, and still is to this day, a big fan of people seeing the fresh food as it was made so we never had doors to the kitchen from either customer entry point. Despite my insistence on it, sure enough, it was the only thing the health inspector ever docked us for, and my dad solved the problem by just putting doors in, but never closing them. Not sure why doors are needed since fast food restaurants don't use them. Guys it's my first time in Bangkok. Thailand. I just went on a food tour. I don't know if you know about Bangkok, but it's humid as heck here. Some of the vendors had fish sitting in cardboard, flies, cockroaches, rats, etc. As far as the eye can see, I ate all the food though. I'll let you know if I die. Hi, was in Bangkok a few years ago. I also ate some of that left out cardboard laying fish. It did not die. I hope the same for you, friend. I do a lot of polishing and chrome plating. I am not a health inspector but I do a lot of work for restaurants. I got a call to chrome plate some refrigerator racks. It's common request. 
these large 36 to 48 inches long rack grills that the food sits on. This one high-end steakhouse that I used to go to calls me in. Their racks were literally falling apart, rusted joints, old food hanging off of them. Just disgusting. I explained they can't be repaired but they insisted that we just shine them up, do whatever is needed. I refused the job, left and wanted to throw up. Never went to that restaurant ever again. Immediately called the health department on them. Don't know what happened. I can tell you what they didn't find. When I worked at Denny's when the health inspector came the cooks took all the expired food out of the fridge and stored it in their cars and by the dumpster until after the health inspector left and then they put it all back. I ended up quitting that job after I got written up for refusing to change the dates on the labels of all the expired food, which was one of the primary jobs of the graveyard server. So, a friend of mine is a health inspector. She walks into a local convenience store and discovers a litter box behind the counter. Totally unacceptable. Tells the proprietor that he needs to get rid of the litter box. That's kind of a health code violation. He replies, well, it's for the cat. We've been having mice rat issues. To which he's all, oh, cat walks up. She tells him he can't have a cat in a food establishment. He hands the cat to his wife and she takes it out of the store to their camper trailer nearby the store. Waits for her to leave. Rinse and repeat. In NYC every corner store has a cat that hangs out there. Worked in a restaurant and whenever a health inspector came I had to go to the kitchen to tell the cooks to put on gloves and hairnets. It's not that they didn't wash their hands or anything. They were old shul with cooking. But still it was a violation. Not a health inspector but an ex-shift manager at Asbaro. I watched the GM regularly drop dough on the ground, pick it up, dust it off and then continue to prep it for pizzas. He also told the entire staff to cut around the mold on the produce because it was too costly to buy new produce when our stock went bad. He was a crappy GM. They also promoted him to a much busier location, and I regularly tell people to not eat there. A restaurateur was trying to reopen a failed one into a new one. It had been a Mexican joint, was going to be a deli. I was working for a pest control company, and they called us to take care of a few bugs. No big deal. They are just proactive. I get there, it's clean, it smells okay, but I'm about one month into this new job and experience. I go to get started and I'm mixing up the crap we have to use in restaurants. And I'm using the water from one of their triple sinks. The water is coming out hot. It's a Vegas summer. So I'm letting it run until it cools down some. I look over at the floor sink the triple sink drains into. And there's a lot of German cockroaches coming out of it. Frick it. This water will do. I fill up the two gallons. Put the pump handle back in and shake it to mix it. Pump it to pressurize and it and get to work. When you start with a full canister, there's less air. So you have to stop and pause to repump it to keep the pressure up. As I'm going the hitting all the cracks and crevices. Behind the sinks. The equipment. Under everything. The seam in the wipe down plastic walls. ETC. Roaches are just pouring out into the open. It's in the thousand stage. Where now. When I stand still they are trying to hide under my boots. The last time I have to stop to pump up the canister. I'm standing on its stainless steel with the brass handle between my feet. Frick this, I call on the radio for a co-worker who I know is nearby because he has a fog unit and I don't at this point, newly hired, wasn't 100% kitted out, Tony swings by, I'm waiting outside, and we renegotiate the service, the new owner had been a little on the light side with the depth of his problem, he agrees, we get to fogging, Tony's showing me how to do it, so I'm just walking behind him, at this point there's tens of thousands of roaches everywhere, Floor, walls, ceiling, we get to the walk-in and above it where I think the compressor was, was a 4 foot, H, by 8 foot by 10 foot space. Tony directs the fog stream up in there, and the roaches start pouring out. Pouring out in such numbers that briefly, you can barely see the stainless steel of the walk-in door. The entire rest of the day, any little itch on my skin, you're leaping to slap it and check it's not a roach stuck on you. That sounds like a living nightmare. Not a health inspector, 
but I used to be a busboy at a nice Italian restaurant in my hometown. We had problems with the Chinese place across the street because we found out that they had been taking the lettuce that we throw in the dumpster at the end of the night. Our manager used to stand outside and guard the dumpster so they wouldn't take our garbage. Another experience working at a local cafe. I was cutting up cheese from a walk-in fridge and I found a hole in the cardboard box that the cheese was kept in. Turned out it was from rats or mice, and they were eating the cheese. Told my manager about it and he told me to cut around the bite marks and still use the cheese. He left that job shortly after. I worked in the deli of a convenience store for nearly 15 years. It was a constant struggle to explain to my boss how I couldn't save the leftover chicken and veggies and sell them the next morning. My customers were happy to pay more knowing the food was always fresh. Six months ago, Boz decided to lease out the kitchen and move me to the main store. Ex-customers keep coming to me to complain about the food tasting bad and making them sick. So I went back to check and counted about 6 violations that would get them shut down or fined. Clorox bleach stored on the floor next to chicken breading. Defrosting meat stored above the vegetables. It drips down onto the veggies, and at the end of the day the cook takes all the food trays and puts them, uncovered, into the fridge to sell the next day without letting them at least cool down. It smells like rotting food back there since they never clean out the drains. I've also seen her cutting uncooked meat with a machete on the bare floor and she never rices down the raw chicken at the end of the day so it starts to stink by midweek. Boss has lost half his regular customer base. Not an inspector but I worked at Sushi and Hibachi restaurant for about a year as a server, host and deliver driver. This place had a ton of things that were certainly questionable but a few of them ended up causing me to leave the place. In the dry storage area, they had cleaning chemicals directly above all of the Togo food packages and plastics where, in that same room, which was really big, I'd randomly see a sleeping bag and pillow tucked away every once in a while. It always stuck out but I never really thought too much into until I went back to grab a bottle of wine and sure enough had stepped on a sleeping woman. She started yelling and I just ran out. My manager pulled me aside later, which I assume was going to be a conversation about keeping that hush hush but no. The dude offered me $25,000 to marry a Thai chick so she could get a green card. My response to him was my two weeks notice. I'm even surprised you gave a notice at all. Not a good inspector, but once I ordered tacos from a high-end vegan restaurant in LA. When I bit into the taco I felt immediately a hard chunk gently slice into the roof of my mouth. I pulled out a 1 inch shard of glass from my taco. Management said they accidentally broke a glass near the tacos and they thought they got all of it they offered a new plate of free tacos but I was like my mouth is bleeding why would I want another taco? <laughs> At least it was vegan glass. Worked in a popular sandwich shop. Our floor drains were smelling rancid for weeks and we're backing up with what was assumed to be sewage. My manager told our owners every single day for 3 weeks that this needed to be fixed and they did nothing. So in the middle of my shift one day, a health inspector came in and immediately shut us down. My manager told me right there that she anonymously called the health debt because that was the only way the owners were going to end up fixing the problem. Major lol. Good manager. Not a health inspector but when I was in my late teens I worked at a 5 star restaurant where they were using potatoes and other produce with maggots in them consistently. Restaurants like these easily charge people $285.350 a head for events like New Year's Eve. They got shut down. I worked as a chef in SF for a couple of years. Every restaurant I worked in was clean but most of them still had a rat problem including rat droppings on food safe surfaces. At those places we plastic wrapped everything, including plates and silverware and surfaces we put food on, nightly. Some of those old cities it's very difficult to really get rid of them completely. So many horrible Chinese restaurants in this thread, so I thought I'd give a shout out to the one I used to work at years ago. The owner was meticulous about cleanliness, every night the kitchen staff would scrub the floor and everything else down with soap and hot water. The dishwasher ran so hot you could see the steam rising and had to wait for them to cool down before you could touch them without burning your hands. That place was clean and served some of the best Chinese food. The owner eventually retired and sold his land. Boy do I miss the hot and sour soup. Good to hear there's a clean Chinese restaurant in this thread. 
Not exactly a health inspector but I work with licensure for healthcare facilities. You'd be surprised how many of them are totally unprepared for emergencies and would probably all die if there was a fire or worse. My dad lives in a senior independent living facility. About 90% of the people use walkers. Every 6 months or so there is a round of removing walkers from the dining room to free up space followed by an ADA complaint that restores the walkers. If there was a fire during one of those spats I can't imagine that headline. Actual health inspector. The worst I've heard between my co-workers is a place that had mice floating in buckets in the basement with severe soiling of all surfaces. It was closed until they could clean it up. The worst I've inspected, at least in terms of public health safety, was a place that let their sandwich making food sit out on a countertop without any cooling. And they were also using a residential dishwasher that couldn't sanitize their dishes. Owner just didn't manage any of their employees. Owners make a huge difference. It's super obvious if they're consistently involved and care. We know the back of the house gets warned and all chef staff throw on gloves real quick. But it's easy to spot when something is a chronic issue. Sometimes we are limited in our actions, though, and it varies by departments. Some have more teeth than others. Not a health inspector, but I've seen some crap. The worst was a restaurant a friend took me to. He loved it and said it was on him, but god dang if it wasn't the sketchiest joint. If he hadn't spent the whole trip talking about how he eats there twice a week and loved it so much I probably would have left. The place was disgusting. Mold on the walls. Dirty floors. Piles of unwashed dishes on the customer tables. Etc. When we left I happened to notice the health inspection sign. They'd gotten a 36 stroke 100. I didn't even know it was possible to score that low and stay open. Not a health inspector, but read public health inspection reviews. There was a Burger King near me that had black mold in the ice machine, and large holes in the kitchen where rats had eaten the walls and buried through. There was also a KFC that was cited for having broken glass and other debris on the serving line. I really don't get that one. Our local health inspector told us a funny conversation he had with a restaurant owner. H.I. Pulls bug out of already prepared food. What's this? Owner? That's a bean. H.I. Beans don't have legs. I'm a NY dairy inspector and I inspect a lot of Jewish dairies. What I've noticed is the Jewish community in my area loves to do their own inspection. The problem is they leave milk bulk tank doors open and rats, flies and other critters get into the milk. The big problem is they never ask to do the inspection they just walk onto the property and do their thing. Actions like that can shut down the whole industry. The current kebab shop I work at, everything is clean, well kept, everything is well maintained. The owner has a twin who also decided to open a kebab shop. I went to visit a few weeks ago. The cheesecakes are left in low temperature cupboards rather than freezers, which isn't cold enough so they have bright green mold. Every single egg there is expired, I checked with the egg in water test. The pizza doughs have all gone bad. You can even tell from the smell. There are milk cartons in the fridge that have been there for around 2 months. He offered me to come work there for £9 an hour, which in England is a lot for someone my age. I said no and I don't regret it. A health inspector is gonna come there soon and close it anyway hopefully. Lifeguard here. One time the GMM of chlorine and the baby pool was around 45. The optimal amount is 1-3. The health inspector was not happy about it. This is how you cook the baby. Hello. Walked into a restaurant in the morning before lunch rush and saw the cooks actively prepping raw chicken in the dirty mop sink. The cook said that the cooking process would make it safe to eat. Walked into a taco shop and found a reach down cooler infested with German cockroaches. When I brought it to the owner's attention, he was in denial and said that the health department is constantly trying to pick on the little guys. As he was talking, a full adult cockroach appeared on the counter and without hesitation, he took the knife used to cut burritos, stabbed it then began to place the knife back to its original location, received a complaint of a heavy grease smell coming from a restaurant, showed up and saw that the owner had been dumping grease outside because his drains were clogged and backing up. Saw that every floor drain he had was actively overflowing and there was sewage all over the floor. Since his drain lines were installed incorrectly, all of the sewage water back siphoned into the ice machine and food prep sink. While this was all happening, they were still serving food and taking orders as if it wasn't a big deal. The cook would cut chicken, 
then switch to use a plunger on the drains then back to cutting chicken without ever washing his hands. Walked into a market with a owner who was visibly nervous. As we were talking, I noticed a large amount of blood in the drains. There was also a lot of black bags containing meat products with no labels or proof of where they purchased it. As I lifted the drain cover, there was blood and bones inside. Later found out that the staff were bringing live goats into the kitchen and killing them on sight. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.